Let's set up a simple scoreboard display that lists players into two columns for two teams. This already calls for a new widget blueprint, so create one. I will name mine W Scoreboard. Inside you can take your time and design your window, which should contain two vertical boxes at the end, one for each team. Make sure to name them and set is variable option to true so that they can show up in the event graph for later. First we want to find all available players in the game and then sort them onto those two lists. To get all players, actually their player states, use get game state and get the player array variable which is a list of all available player states in the game. Now you want to loop through that list and for each one cast to your player state blueprint which contains information about the player's team and other values like points. Using switch on the team string from the player state blueprint, we can add this player onto either the red players list for team A or on the blue players list for team B. If you're unfamiliar with the team variable I'm using, make sure to watch the previous video about how I set up teams and player states. We'll be using add child for adding players onto those columns as rows and for that we will need another widget containing all information we want to display in the scoreboard about the specified player. So make a new widget blueprint, W player line. Delete the default canvas panel and replace it with a horizontal box, where you will list everything you want to show about the player. For example, here's his name on the left and his points on the right side of the horizontal box. Now we need his name and points values. All of that must be in the player state, so make a new variable, which is your player state blueprint, and make it instance editable and expose and spawn, you will see later why. Next, make a binding for the name text component, which will automatically fill the text with the player state's get player name function, and another binding for the points text, where it should show us the player's points. If you've been following the tag game tutorials, you will notice that our points are in the player controller instead, so we will fix that first, otherwise skip to part 2 of this video. First, we'll make a new integer points variable in PS tag blueprint, with replicated option enabled because it's the server's job to update it. Then go to the GM tag game mode and add the timer where it's adding points to the tagged player each second, replaced PC tags points with the PS tag player state point variable. You will need to cast to PS tag first to get them. Then in the WInfo widget where it's displaying those points, we need to switch them from PC tag to PS tag's version again. And lastly, the checkpoints event also needs to be updated by switching points to the PS tag player state version just by casting using the player controllers and getting the player state references there. Everything works fine, except if you take a closer look at the points display, it's a bit out of sync with the time. That's because the frequency at which our PS stack player state is updating is set to 1, so 1 update each second. That's a bit too low for a nice gaming experience, so raise it to 10. Back to the player line bind function, we can now use our new points variable from the player state to display them next to the player's name. Let's make tab button show the scoreboard when pressed and hide it when released. For that, go to your player controller blueprint and on tab pressed, create the W scoreboard widget and put it on the viewport with add to viewport. We will need to remove it on release, so first save its reference in a new scoreboard variable and on release call remove from parent on the scoreboard variable. Sometimes released and pressed events don't trigger on the tab button when you alt tab between game windows when testing so it'd be a good idea to first check for the scoreboard, if it's valid before removing it, or if it doesn't exist yet before adding it. The scoreboard shows, but there aren't any players in it, and that's because we haven't used that player line widget yet. Back in the W scoreboard graph event, 
we will need to create a new player line widget for each player. Notice how the create widget node got the player state pin because we set the variable to instance editable and expose and spawn. Connect it to the ps tag object and then add the player line widget to the add child functions as content for red and blue team lists. I see two players on team A and two players on team B, which is correct. But the text is too large. And that's it. Before you go, if you have any ongoing projects you want to share, join my Discord server where we'll gladly play your games and give you some useful feedbacks for improvements. Thanks for watching and see you next time.